Hey, it's Felix with 4x4 Agent. And today we're going to be putting in a winch and all the other stuff. So I ended up going with a Warn VR uh, Evo 10S. So we're gonna be putting that in. I also got the Warn mount for it. That's all that stuff. The plate that it came in has this license plate holder that I will not be using since I'm in Florida and we do not require front license plates. So I ended up getting the separate one. Uh, I believe that was Mopar without uh, this thing. Some people can cu cut it off. I decided I'm just going to spend the whatever 30, 40 bucks that was and get one without the license plate. Um, going to be putting in a Factor 55 hook, a Maximus 3 bar. Um, and just because I like to keep things complicated, we're going to also swap in the hooks from a 392 to go with my whole uh, bronze, gold, green, black theme. So we're going to be put it, pu uh, pulling out the red hooks. And also with the bar, I got the frame or reinforcement brackets. So we're going to be putting those in. So I was thinking about how do I want to film this. And initially my plan was to set up a couple cameras from different angles and just film the whole process. But uh, I'm actually going to modify that because uh, just looking up some last minute videos, trying to figure out all the steps I'm going to have to do. I found that there's not a single video that gives you 100% of the steps that you have to do, or at least uh, shows them. Um, that seems like every video glazes over at least a few of the steps. So I'm going to basically be recording this, holding my phone underneath the Jeep or while I'm up all in it. Um, not going to be using any external mics. So I apologize for any poor video or sound quality, but I figured it is more important to show every single step of the way so that somebody has a roadmap to follow to make it easier instead of trying to capture perfect video or perfect sound. Um, so hopefully you guys appreciate that. Um, like I said, I'm gonna be doing, doing a couple extra things. So I will point out those steps uh, that you don't need to do if you're not doing them. That'll be removing and replacing the two tow hooks as well as installing the bar and the frame reinforcement brackets. So we'll still get those on tape and I'll show you, but I'll know that, hey, if you're just doing the winch install, you don't need to worry about this stuff. All right, so I removed already these four bolts. That's where the bar is going to go, uh, just because I've had the bar installed here for a couple of days now. Um, so I just pulled it off so you guys can see me put it on. Um, so the step one is going to be to remove those two plastic tabs all you do is you take a screwdriver get under them pop them out and then this comes out um, step two which you can do while the bumper is on the jeep or after you take it off we're going to remove these uh torque 45s just to get this out i'm going to do it now and then this piece comes out and this is just plastic i'm going to get a pry tool get under here and just pry it open I mean, you could do it with your fingers if you have nails um, I would not use a screwdriver. I don't want to scratch the bumper. So I'm just going to use a plastic uh, trim tool and pop that off. There's no, nothing is holding this. It's just a couple tabs and it'll just come right out. Once I do that, we're going to go underneath and uh, remove the skid plate. And I'll show you that. Be right back. So just to show you, took up one of these. Just got under there like this and just... popped it and then this one popped out and you just pull this out you won't be needing this because uh we're gonna put that in this place so we'll make a pile of stuff we don't need right there and now i'm just gonna take uh, the torx 45 the t45 and take off these five bolts and get this out so this is out. I'm retaining the screws because after I'm done installing it, what I want to do is I'm going to pull off those tabs of the piece we just removed and secure these screws back into place so that I don't leave holes and it has more of the finished, you know, riveted look. So 
So now we're gonna remove these plastic tabs. And just get a screwdriver under there and pop them up. You're not gonna be keeping this piece, at least in theory. So you don't have to be super careful about it. Um, I have seen some people, um, once they get their winch in, chop this up a little bit, kind of cut out the middle section where the winches and leave the wings and put the wings back in. I may or may not do that. I guess we will see. All right, that is out. Now this just lifts out of here. All right, Jeep is turned off. The parking brake is engaged. Um, I don't think I'm gonna need to jack this up at all. So we're gonna go under there and look at um, skid plate. All right, so we're underneath now. Here's a skid plate. We're gonna have to remove this one, two, three, four, five, six, looks like seven. Um, and that should come out. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now, just uh, when you do this careful, because once you remove all of them, this will just fall on your face. So be ready for that. Oh, and uh, it's a 13 millimeter socket. All right, uh, the skid plate is off, word of caution. Um, so I left the two southern ones for last, and then I took the passenger side off first, kind of used my forearm to support it like this while I took off the driver's side one. And I was expecting it to come straight down. It didn't, it kind of swung on me because I think it's uh, heavier in the front. So just be careful when you take off the last bolt, if you're doing this by yourself, it's not gonna come straight down at you, it's gonna kinda swing. So be prepared for it to move on you. All right, the next step is we're gonna disconnect the fog lights so that we don't rip them off. Um, it's on the passenger side. So I have these things. Um, you will, probably won't have these. Um, I, don't, I could take them off, it's just the two uh, bumper bolts here. But I don't need to. I think I'm going to just leave them on unless I'm forced to take it off here later. Uh, but right here, right by the frame on the passenger side is the connector. Um, so you need to disconnect that. So I had to take my gloves off for this. Um, so I've already disconnected this, but I'll show you. So it's snapped in. So this is attached here to the frame. But what you can do is actually you can use it to your advantage. You just put your thumb here and you push down towards the frame. So basically in, and then this will pop right out. You just need to use two hands. So in with your thumb as hard as you can. It'll give, it'll give a little bit. And then this with your other hand, just pull it out. All right. So I actually had to end up removing those little covers that I installed because we have bolts on that side that we have to access. So once you have the skid plate removed, once you have the fog lights disconnected, um, next step is to remove the eight bolts holding the bumper into the frame. There's two on each side of uh, each frame piece. So this is the passenger side. You have two there. You have two there. And then this is the driver's side. Two here. And two more right there. Um, those are 18 millimeters and you're gonna need a deep socket because they have the screws sticking out at the back. So now I'm gonna remove those eight bolts and we'll be right back. All right, those eight bolts are out. As you can see, there's the two, there are the two more. There's eight of them total. Um, so now we should be able to just grab this with two hands and lift off. So I'm gonna grab by the hooks. Um, I don't know if I mentioned it, you're gonna need an 18 millimeter socket to remove those. Um, and uh, word of advice to those who haven't done this before, make sure to keep your mouth shut when you're under the car unbolting stuff where you're gonna have all sorts of 
garbage fall on you. All right, be right back. All right, and the bumper is off. So uh, mine came out easy on that side. On that side, it was a little tight. I thought maybe I forgot a bolt or nut or something. So no, I just had to wiggle it and give it a little oomph. So the next part is does it not apply to you unless you plan on doing something with these hooks. Um, what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to remove this metal housing. And it looks like I'm going to have to take those out, unscrew this. Uh, that's already unscrewed. I'm going to have to unscrew that. So basically take all the exterior bolts out. Yep. So any bolts left, bot top or bottom, like this. I'm going to need to take them off and then this should come out and give me access to the hook. So I'm going to do that and be back. Be right back. All right. These little suckers are proving uh, more difficult to remove than I expected. Um, I'm still going to do it. I think what I have to do is I literally have to uh, cut them off. Um, in the process, I may scratch up this metal plate. So if uh, I'm successful and when I remove all four of those, whatever they're called, um, I'm going to just uh, hit it, clean it up and uh, hit it with some uh, black rustoleum just to prevent any kind of rusting. Um, I don't think they're necessary. All they're doing is they're literally holding this in place. But these are the bolts that go through the frame that bolt down to the frame. So you have the frame on this side and then you have a bolt holding it down. So I don't think they're needed. I think they're literally for holding in place maybe during the manufacturing process. And I can't imagine it's gonna wiggle too much without them to try to get them centered. I don't know, but we'll find out, I guess, together. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these off and we'll be back. All right, quick update, got one off. So the trick is to use a screwdriver or if you have like a, like a trim pry tool, get under there, pry it up, just one side of it, and then use a Dremel or some sort of rotary tool and just cut it off. Uh, those things are not coming out any other way at least any other way that I know of. So that's what I'm gonna do. All right, after struggling with the first few, I figured out what's the best way to do this. And I've tried everything. Um, I've tried Dremel, I've tried cutting, I've tried snipping. Um, the best and easiest way, in my opinion, to do this with causing as little damage to this as possible, take a knife, a utility knife. You slip it underneath. That will scratch it up a little bit but you need to get under there somehow. This is your best way. And doing this one-handed lefty sucks, so I'm doing a lot more damage right now because it's slipping, but you get your knife under there. All right, we're gonna switch hands here so that I can do this. So you get your knife under there just to create a little gap. Take a flathead screwdriver, the thinnest, smallest that you have, and now you take the gap that was created, and I'm actually going to come from that side. So let's flip that again. And you get your screwdriver under there. So basically, each time just creating a little bit more space. So I don't think I pried it enough with my knife. So I need to kind of get it up just a little bit. So again, it helps if you have two hands, because one hand can pry with a knife, the other one can stick the screwdriver. All right, we got that in there. And you just, again, wiggle a little bit, and that'll get it bent. Then just take a pair of pliers, and grab a hold of it, and turn. Again, this is a lot more difficult to do with my left hand and one-handed because what you can do is you can be prying up either on the knife or the screwdriver to get that more once you grab a hold of it all you got to do is just twist 
and it will cut and rip it right. All right, out. once you have all four of them off, I just kind of cleaned up the spot, just wiped it down. This lifts straight out. So once you have all the screws removed and those four thingies off, this comes straight up. When this comes straight up, you have your hook. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just lift this out, go get my gold one, put that in, and I'm gonna hit those areas with just black Rust-Oleum. Um, the little bit of damage that I did trying to get those off, that'll cover it and uh, hopefully prevent any rust issues. So I'll be right back. All right, I decided I need to film this or y'all gonna think something is missing, like a step, because this is just stupid. So apparently, and I didn't notice this when I was taking out the red hooks, but I went back and looked at the video and put in the red hooks back, and this is true. When you go and put the hook back in, and just roughly it sits where that little hump kind of lines up with the bumper, um, once we put the plate back in, it all kind of gets centered in. You have this bolt that's sitting on this metal plate. This bolt is sitting on that plastic clip and the back two are just floating. I can literally get a finger in between that plastic clip and this bolt and between that bolt head and the metal part of the bumper. So it's literally just sitting on these two points and those two are floating. Wow. I thought I missed something. I thought maybe, you know, the hooks from the 392 are different. I grabbed the Rubicon red hook, checked, they're the same. It, I thought maybe, you know, this was a left and that's a right and there's a difference there. Nope. Both hooks are the same product or same um, product number or ID or whatever. Yeah, that's just a design where those two just float. I guess that makes those clips uh, make more sense because when, you know, they're putting this in the factory, that shit is going to fall right out. But it should be fine. Um, it's going to be sitting, again, through those holes. And then when we go to attach it to the bumper, um, it'll be tightened down. So what could be an issue is because this is literally not sitting in any kind of place, this will move around somewhat. Not much, because, again, it's going to be going through these holes. But uh, we're probably going to have to jiggle or jiggle it around to get it back into the bumper um all right hopefully that goes well so i'm gonna go ahead and assemble all this right now i'm gonna put this back in screw down all the bolts and uh, reassemble this whole piece and then we'll get back to actually the witch installation all right everything is put back in all the exterior bolts are in so it's a little loose in there, right? Because we don't have those four things, but uh, it'll be fine once we put it back on. All right, so now getting back to the winch installation. All right, the next step is, so before we actually get back to the winch, um, since I'm putting in the bar, uh, I got the optional reinforcement bracket and I'm gonna put that in right now because from what i can tell right now is the easiest time so the mounting plate for the winch is going to go here these reinforcement brackets for the bull bar go here so before we put everything in i'm going to uh put this in in here so just know that uh, this is not part of the winch install this is separate to specific to the maximus three uh, bull bar that I got. There's gonna be one on this side and then one on that side. It's a they're different pieces So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. Oh, and if you're doing this um, the socket you're gonna need Is I just had it in my hand 16 um, And the, just the way it goes is you undo that bolt you put this in, these face in towards the center of the vehicle, and then this faces to the front. So it goes in just like that. And on this side, it goes like this into there. 
All right, uh, update. On the way to AutoZone, um, or Advanced Auto Parts, sorry, and to get my new bolt. I was attaching the, the bar support bracket and I misread the torque specs and instead of torquing it to 15 foot-pounds, I went and torqued it to about three or four times that and snapped off the head of the bolt. Yep. So now I'm driving to uh, Advanced Auto Parts to pick up a new bolt. And uh, when I get back, I'm gonna put in the bar support brackets and we'll continue with the installation. So I'll uh, put links in the description about uh, a couple places online where you can get the proper torque settings. Um, just uh, make sure you don't misread them like me. All right, new bolts in hand. Uh, we're on the way back. Once I get back, we'll uh, get this finished up. One thing that popped into my head and kind of, I guess, explains for a lot of the different information that I was seeing on YouTube. Um, so to be clear, the winch plate, the thing that supports the winch that I got is the worn one. Um, I recall watching a video this morning just to getting my bearings straight before doing this and one of the guy's instructions didn't make any sense to me and I understand why now. He wasn't using the worn uh, winch support thing. He was using, um, I believe it was Maximus 3. So, you know, your mileage will vary. If you're using the worn uh, winch support bracket, then uh, the installation will be the same. If you're using a different one and there's a ton of them out there, um, it'll be a little different because they seem to all kind of connect and in different places and using different bolts and whatnot. So just uh, putting that out there, this is for the worn uh, support bracket. All right, crisis averted. We got the new bolt installed with our uh, reinforcement bracket. So continuing on to the winch installation. So the next thing we have to do is we have to take off these two and these two bolts and mount the support plates. So one is gonna go there like this, and the other one is going to go like. So today is clearly not my day. Um, as I went to install the support brackets, um, I went to put in the carriage bolts into the back because once you get the support bracket in, it sits right up on this and you can't get in from the back. Lo and behold, I have four holes and require two, I'm sorry, require four carriage bolts, but there's only three. Yep, worn, screwed up, and included only three and not four carriage bolts in that bolt bag. I checked all the others. I checked the box, thought maybe it fell out. No, nothing. Called Warren, got the specs for the bolt. I mean, they're in the parts list, but they gave me some more information. Called all around locally, nobody has them. Not high grade enough. Uh, Tractor Supply actually had the right size, but not high enough grade. Under normal circumstances, I would have just said screw it. If it fits, it goes. But being that it's a winch component and there's lots of stress and it's a component that I don't want to fail because uh, when I need it, that could be a problematic and or dangerous. Um, so called worn back. They're overnighting me a bolt. Um, initially, the first time I talked to them, they said they could ship it out, but it's UPS ground. And it's going to take like a week. And I was like, okay, well, you know, I don't want this sitting here and driving like that for a week. So went online, started looking, can't find anywhere. My only options online are either wait a week, you know, or I can order like 200 of them or whatever. Um, because I can't just buy one or two or even a dozen. 
So cold war and back, I said, look, I need you to sh send me the bolt. I'll pay for overnight shipping. Just overnight it to me. So they are overnighting it to me. Um, they are not having me pay for it. They're paying for the shipping. Um, so it's probably going to go out tomorrow, which is Tuesday. And now they did say it'll be there by Thursday for sure, but I'm hoping it'll be here before then. So we're going to kind of pause that whole thing and just leave it basically as is. Um, what I'm going to do, it's really the only thing I can do is, so there are a couple steps that need to happen on the bumper. Um, need to disconnect all the Christmas trees, the plastic Christmas trees for this. And I guess they get reconnected later at some point. So I'll get that done right now. And then I'm going to install in the front the plate adapter and the Fairlead. Um, and just, you know, do as much as I can in the meantime. So, uh... I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect the Christmas trees right now and we'll be right back. Since at this point we have nothing but time, I figured I'd show you how I'm doing this. So I got this thing, it came in a kit from Amazon. It was like 20 bucks, came with a bunch of uh, plastic trim tools and stuff. So all you do is you jam it under the plastic tab. Like that and squeeze and it pops it right out all right it's a lot easier to do with uh, two hands so I'll do one more here for you and then we'll come off and I'll do the rest off camera all right all the Christmas trees are disconnected apparently they're just gonna hang and we're gonna attach them uh, at a later point so now I'm going to flip this over and we're going to work on the front. All right, while we wait for the carriage bolt to arrive, we're going to get as much of the other stuff done as possible. So I'm going to replace these five Torx screws that I took out uh, just to make it look better and not leave holes. So they used to be connected with clips like that. Those clips can be reused, but Warren provides five of these. They're meant to go on the back of this. So we're gonna go ahead and put those in right now. All right, next we're gonna install the cover plate and the fair lead. Um, so what you get is you get two regular washers, two locking washers, two nuts, and then two bolts. Um, what I noticed is the hardware slightly differs, at least look seems that way from person to person. Um, I didn't get nice um, bolts for the front. I got just two regular bolts. So what I decided to do is just to hit them with a little bit of black Rust-Oleum so that it blends into all the black instead of sticks out like sore thumbs. So I let them dry for a bit and just uh, hopefully that'll work. They've been drying now for about 12 hours. All right, so now we're gonna put this in. So from the front, you obviously run the bolt through the two things. From the back, it goes washer, locking washer, nut in that order. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in right now. All right, so the Christmas tree clips are removed. The bolts are installed back. We have the fair lead on the plate installed. Just using a washer and a nut so the I don't know if I'm using the wrong bolts but when you use these that technically you're supposed to for the plate and the fair lead the bolts are not long enough so I decided to skip those locking washers and then all that's left are these two spacers um, so they go towards the fog light all the way so Inside, outside, so they go on the outside facing the little like, parts that stick out. It's not a straight line facing the fog lights. So that's it. Our bumper is done and is ready to be put back on. That we're waiting for the carriage bolt and we can finish that, putting that in. That'll be that. 
So the only thing really left at this point that we can do prior to is attach the negative cable to the winch. This is the hardware I'm gonna to need to mount the winch to the plate. And I have no idea what all that is. It doesn't talk about it in the instructions. It doesn't show any steps. So it seems like almost, no, they're longer. So yeah, I, I'm not sure. I mean, there are a bunch of steps in there that don't apply. So maybe that's in the instructions, I mean. I don't know if that's for like Europe or something, but maybe those are the bolts for that. I don't know, kind of weird though. All right, so for the negative, I'm gonna do this one up. Turn this one up, dropping it. If, uh, on the back is uh, this nut. All we wanna do is we wanna take this off with the washer and attach one of these leads to it because this cable and the red cable are gonna go into the Jeep and attach it to the battery. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now and be right back. All right, so this is done as well. As you can see, I put in the negative. So all that's left is taking a couple of zip ties off and that's ready for install. So we did as much as we could, except for uh, finishing the main piece, just waiting for the carriage bolt. So as soon as it gets here, hopefully tomorrow, uh, we'll finish this up. All right, almost a week later and we got our carriage bolts. So it seems like they sent me all four. In reality, I just need one. So at least I have some extras. So now we're going to uh, continue this process. Over the last few days, as I've been watching more videos and just reading more about it, there's a tidbit that I came across. So because we are putting in spacers here, it kind of pushes the whole bumper um, off of its location that it was in originally. And from what I understand is when you go to put in the skid plate, uh, the back bolts don't exactly line up and some people are forced to notch the hole or drill another hole for it. So I saw a guy who uh, was doing this and what he recommended was to lo loosen these up and take a, uh, a dead blow or some sort of a hammer and knock these plates forward as much as possible. So that's actually what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna loosen up these four bolts, get under there and uh, push these forward as much as possible to try to help offset that so we don't have to drill the skid plate. So other than that, um, these are already on. I'm going to uh, put in the two carriage bolts here and um, going to attach that. So I'll be right back. And just to be clear, what we are Move, trying to move forward is this piece. So when you unloosen these two, you wanna hit it from back here. So, because these, uh, I believe, it, I don't remember if it's this hole or this one that the skid plate's attached to, needs to move closer to the front of the car. So that's what I did. I just loosened these up a little bit, hit it a few times here, it shifted just slightly and uh, tighten these back up. So now I'm gonna do that to the other side. All right, the plate is in. We have zip ties set up. The trick is here to get all these holes to align. So you're working with the winch plate, you're walk, walk, working with the frame, and then on this side, th uh, this piece also moves. So you have to basically line up three pieces, one, two, and three, to make sure that they all line up, so on both sides. So n now we have our carriage bolts in. I've secured, not fully tightened, but uh, I put on the nuts just to hold it in place. Now we're gonna place the winch and tighten it down. So a couple things with that. Here are the four bolts. So you have a locking washer, then a regular washer. This will go in from the bottom. And then these 
actually sit in the feet of the winch. So there are cutouts that you just slide these into and they sit in there like that. So the only problem is, is when you go to put the winch in, these fall out. So what you would wanna do is just take a small piece of tape and cover it so they don't fall out and do that on all four. Once that's done, I'm gonna take that, put it in there and put the bolts in from the bottom. So be right back. All right, small adjustment in the fly. What I just noticed is this ground isn't hooked up into there. I don't know if it wasn't and I didn't do it or when I was putting in the other negative, this popped out. So now I'm gonna unscrew that and put this in there as well. All right, show you what that looks like from down here. So as you can see in there now, we're gonna screw into the winch. So these two are in place and lined up, but these, the little nuts fell. So what you wanna do, or not fell, but moved, you just kinda use a little pick tool or something and just kinda get them aligned with the hole. So let me see here, that looks about good. So I hope you can see that. So now we're gonna put in these four in and tighten it down. And then we're gonna to torque to spec, which is between 30 and 35 uh, foot pounds. So be right back. All right, the winch is mounted. I've uh, attached the four bolts from the bottom. Uh, I've tightened those to spec. Spec say between 30 and 35. I went kind of right in the middle at 33. Um, these holes are still aligned. I'm gonna lift it up just a tad because they did sag a bit from the weight of the winch. And then um, I disengaged this, pulled out the rope, kind of tucked in as much of the wiring here as I could, got this ready to go up there to the battery. The next step is to reattach the bumper. So I already have the spacers on there. So once I kind of get those holes a little bit better lined up and secured by tightening the zip ties, I'm gonna put the bumper on and then using the eight nuts that I removed, I'm gonna start screwing in the bumper from the back. So uh, be right back. All right, so it is on. So we have the rope pulled through the fair lead. Um, let's see. All eight bolts are on and screwed in. So four on this side. The hook is nice and solid. It's not going anywhere. Uh, got these in as well. So all good there. Um, I got this lined up right remember this is the part that's not part of the winch this is for my bar so i had to loosen that up to get this to line up with the bumper so uh, that was an extra step that you won't have to deal with when you install the winch and since i like things complicated i had to do the same thing on here so this bolt is actually holding it in right now all lined up because i had to unscrew and line up this side as well but the problem is the winch is really close here, so I couldn't get in there with a socket. I literally had to do that by hand with an open-ended wrench. Um, that sucked. And I don't have a, I don't have ratcheting wrenches, so I had to use the manual one. Um, if you're looking to buy wrenches, I highly recommend you get ratcheting. This could have saved me probably at least an hour right now. So, but it's done. Everything is in. I've also, let's go underneath. I'll show you what happened there. So I have this point have torqued down the carriage bolts. So everything is locked in. I took off the zip ties and I put in the Christmas tree back with a fog light wiring. So FYI, these 
actually stay on the bumper, so you don't need to remove them. The only one that comes off of the bumper and goes onto the winch plate is this one. So from the edge, from the end, it's the second one. The ones in the middle that are attached here will stay on the bumper, so you don't, do not have to remove them. So you will remove that one. So everything's tied in. At this point, um, I'm gonna double check the instructions, but I'm either wiring that in or putting in this kit plate. So uh, let me check and we'll come back. All right, so the next step is to wire this up. So I'm not 100% sure, but here's what I'm thinking. I'm gonna go underneath the front grill. I'm gonna pull, so in there, I'm gonna disconnect this clip so I can pull this back, wire it through inside above this clip and go that way. And then once we get over there, I don't know if you can see it. No. Here, I'll come around this side. So there's my hole. So this is a V6. All engine compartments are a little bit different. But there's my straight shot. I, this is the original antenna that I took off I had laying around. So I stuck it from up there. And that's the path I'm gonna follow. So, but I'm gonna have to get there. So kind of, it's behind this, this. It's kind of over there, you can kind of see it. But I'm gonna have to get there from there. And I think what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna go behind there through here and that way. And then from there, I'm gonna go up. So I'm gonna try that right now and uh, be right back. All right, I got it figured out. So we come in underneath the grill. I popped off this Christmas tree or plastic tab or whatever you wanna call it. I routed the wires around this there's a hole there that I zip tied them to. And I then went that way. So, right behind that, which honestly I'm not sure what that is. But I recently drove the car and it was not super hot, so I don't think it should be an issue. So then, once we got under here, let's see if I can get this to show what's the best way to do this. Um, focus. All right, so they came out from Right there, right, that's a silver thing that I went around. And then we went straight up underneath the air box where the filter is. And it comes out right by the filter. So let's go up on top and I'll show you. All right, there we are. We're coming up right next to the filter. Let's see if I can get in there. And there's that silver thing that we went around. Here is a positive and a negative. So I think I'm gonna uh, just zip tie them together possibly. I don't, I don't think I'm gonna zip tie it to here. I believe that gets hot because I've already burnt myself on that. So I don't wanna go here. Yeah, I think that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna go like this for the positive. And like this for the negative. All right, let me do that and I'll be right back. All right, and we're done. So, to go over the wiring. We came up through behind the grill. I ended up with some extra wires, so this is where I kind of chose to bundle it up and zip tie it. So that's just connected to the wire itself. 
I zip tied it to the frame piece over there and then we ran it up right next to that silver thing again not sure what that is then I'm gonna reinstall this uh, plastic clip so then when we go under here so there is that silver box that we saw and there are the cables that go up this is difficult it's very tight in here um so sorry if you can't really tell but there's the engine from the or the belt from the engine and then we go up right next to it i think maybe get a glimpse from in here let's see there and then we go all the way up and come out by the air box so i'll go show you that right now all right so then we come up right by the air filter box negative goes into negative positive goes there that's it for the wiring all right we are almost there just uh right now putting in the skid plate back reattaching all the screws and then after that, gonna have to reconnect the fog light harness and uh, attach the hook and everything. So almost there. Gonna do the skid plate right now. Be right back. All right. The skid plates reattached. My little trick of uh, trying to hammer out those pit pieces didn't work. I had to uh, drill the edge screws where is it mm, that one so it is what it is so i just notched it out a little bit with a drill bit and just punched this in so that's done and holding so all that's left now is reconnect the fog lights attach the hook and uh we're done so uh be right back all right finally after a little bit of blood a lot of sweat and uh, almost tears a couple times it is done so now we have the oem steel bumper and the stubby form factor we've swapped out the red rubicon hooks for the golden ones simply because red has no business being on that green. Um, I actually have custom stickers coming to replace the Warren logos. They're going to be black and bronze as well. Got the uh, Warren Fairlead, Factor 55 Ultra Hook. That is no longer red. That is no longer red. That is no longer red. That will not be red in a day or two. That is not red. Okay, that's still red, but not messing with suspension at this point. And then we're gonna chop the fenders and get rid of that, that as well. It's not red, but this will be nicer. We're gonna do the Rugged Ridge uh, DLR chop. So stay tuned, like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching.